Folks, we need to revisit Battlisks. Why? Well, lots has changed since our first video on the Rats with Wings from over two years ago. And even more changes seem to be at play now since even a quality of life update from just last year. So listen, Battlisks are just kind of weird. Probably more so now than ever. So just take all this with a grain of salt. I just want to share a couple new tidbits. Well, that, and maybe point out a potential bug. As I'm not too sure if this newest mechanic is one or not. For you see, we used to just open sinkholes, and bats would periodically spawn one by one in fairly quick succession. Now, they all just bloody spawn at once practically. Now I don't know why, or how, or if it's unintentional, but I do know that it kinda leads to some less than desirable drawbacks about bats nowadays. Cause again, we used to just be able to stand around these open sinkholes and bonk bats one at a time for quick and easy kills, and it was one of the simplest bat farms around. But this new change, or current bug perhaps, sees all bats spawn at once, as I said. However, this is seemingly leading to super slow respawn timers, and then I've noticed that the game won't spawn bats until they're all back again. So all I'm trying to say is that we should probably not be standing around these things waiting anymore, because it doesn't work like that anymore. But don't fret. Yes, they do eventually respawn. So it does appear that we still have this option. The Bunnymen Blockers. Essentially, you just plant some Bunnymen Hutches close to an open sinkhole, and the bunnies will just quote-unquote farm the bats for us. As yes, both mobs emerge at the same exact time during the day, and both aggro on one another. So, we just check back later for our loot. But before we ourselves talk about said loot, we actually need to discuss where else to encounter battleisks nowadays, and one of those places is the tall stalagmite terrain biome here. And yes, there are actually two stalagmite terrain biomes down under, so don't get confused. We are looking for the tall stalagmites and white turf, aka guano turf. And trust me, you'll know it when you see it. And in fact, since battleisks themselves occasionally drop guano as they flap about, it might not be a bad idea to follow the crap to actually locate some bats down here. Now you might want to hold your nose, however, cause there's gonna be lots of guano everywhere around these parts. Heck, even their bat caves are covered in the stuff. But speaking of, bat caves are the only natural spawn point to bats down in the caves, and each hold four battleists total. And if a bat is murdered, another will spawn in but two minutes. So with whatever is going on with the sinkholes, it might still be advised to come down to these biomes if you're looking to farm battleisks. Oh, but be careful though. If you see a bunch of red eyes in these caves, that means that all four battleisks are just gonna emerge at one time if you happen to approach it. That's not really that big of a deal though, because let's face it, Bats are embarrassingly easy to handle. No, seriously, the things even tell you when they're going to attack, and not only stop for a second or two, but screech along the way. They also just love circling their prey, so cutting them off that way ain't hard either. Honestly, no one should have a single problem with bats, just as long as you don't build your base too close to an open sinkhole. Good luck. But a few last notes here before we get to the real reason for this video. We have an 11.2% chance to spawn in a wave of five battleisks upon hammering a broken ancient pseudoscience station down in the ruins. So heads up there. Battleisks will actually eat meat items on the ground when not aggroed onto anything, and if we hit them, they're just gonna drop it from their mouths. And bats themselves can even sleep during the daytime if they cannot make it back to their caves or down into the sinkholes. And lastly, a battleisk will automatically become hostile to us if we happen to be in range of them when we're hitting or killing a nearby naked mole bat down in the lunar grotto. Yup, it's a thing. Although most of the time, you're not going to experience this. Also, oddly, it doesn't work both ways. But now, the loot. Battleists have had their pools tweaked a bit since we've last talked about them. 
but it's still actually possible to get absolutely nothing from them per a kill. Cause even monster meat here only has a 10% chance to drop from these suckers. But speaking of meats, of the monster variety, mind you, we can hang it for jerky to make it last longer, use one and fillers to still net meatballs if we wish, bite the bullet when needed and just eat the dang stuff raw or cooked, but at the end of the day, it's bloody food. So you use it to your advantage. I don't think you need me to talk about monster meats. But you might need me for this stuff. Another battleist food drop, battleist wings. For you see, not only have recent tweaks made it to where we now have a 25% chance to get one per kill up from 15, we can now also use them in crockpots where we couldn't before, folks. Plus, note how dried battleless wings actually turn to mini jerky instead of monster jerky. And how cooked wings are actually not that bad, all things considered, and almost 20 hunger and 10 health each. It's actually, surprisingly, good stuff. But it might just get better. For you see, not only did a bat specific loot change, but bat crafts did too. Well, there's really only one bat craft, and it's the bat bat here, but still. The magic weapon went from costing five battleless wings to but three. So now begs the question, is it actually worth using? And I mean, it leeches 6.8 health every hit, unless you're already fully healed, which is pretty significant actually. However, still drains your sanity by 3.4 points each hit as well, so you gotta consider that. But bat pats are really just meant for mobs with low health pools in order for us to kill them with it for a good margin of health while still keeping our sanities tame. Or for just when we want a strategic health gain by maybe targeting non-hostile creatures with the thing. They're honestly not bad. Better now that they're cheaper. And they should certainly be considered a back pocket sort of deal when or if you want to use it. Ah, but we cannot end the day without some more crap talk, everyone. Battleists not only produce guano on occasion, but also have a 15% chance to drop some guano upon death to boot. And guano here is a fertilizer that has always been two times as effective as manure when it comes to restoring manure nutrients to farm plots. And with the new farm plots, that is still absolutely in play. But Wormwood players specifically can also smear some on themselves to heal for three health a smelly pop. And that's good stuff. And there you have it everyone. A revisit on Battleisks that may even need another revisit as who knows, maybe the sinkhole nonsense is indeed a bug. I guess we'll find out together. Still, I just wanted to share some new loot tables in case you didn't know about it and the possibilities that come with that regardless, while also pointing out new sources that I did not talk about way back when. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Maybe don't actually eat bats after the year we just had. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.